please welcome our friend, Uzo Aduba. Oh. Hello, be you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Truly, this is an incredible honor. And I want to extend my thanks to Boston University for this gift, to the College of University, the College of Fine Arts, excuse me. <laughs> University, <laughs> College of Fine Arts the College of Fine Arts, and to our Dean, Lynn Allen. It is truly a remarkable honor to have the opportunity to come back and speak at the very institution where I have myself walked and I myself have learned. It wasn't a lot, so long ago that I, like some of you, was waking up at 7.50 in the morning in West Campus. What up, West Campus? <laughs> and making my way down to CFA for an 8 a.m. ear training and sight reading class. 8 a.m. 8 a. every student's favorite hour of the day, <laughs> right? I can also still look back on the days when I found myself with a longer break heading over to the GSU, to People Watch, or over to the BU Beach to take in some of the sun on those warm days in late spring that came right as you were getting ready to leave for the summer. <laughs> and, or stopping to get a grilled chicken salad from BHP, or a slice from T. Anthony's. That was my spot. <laughs> this is the place where I found my own daily routine. And it is also the place where I found the beginning of myself. Even with that familiarity, you can still, I hope, imagine my initial range of emotions when asked to come and speak to the graduating class of 2017. Talk about the things I know and have learned about what is obviously the easiest topic that has ever been discussed, life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there I was, minding my own business, checking my email. Oh, look, an email from Dean Allen. She's so sweet. Hi, Uzo. She spelled my name right. It matters. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. I hope this finds you well, busy, but being creative. She's always so thoughtful. I wanted to reach out to see if you might be able in late spring to come up to Boston and speak at the Boston University graduation. I know your schedule probably changes by the minute, but I'm sure that the kids would love it if you came, exclamation point. I hope you are well, smiley face, and look forward to us connecting. Have a great day, exclamation point. Warmly, Lynn. The kids would love it? My brain began to race, and I started to make the only clear and obvious choice. I began to Google. I began to Google ribbon cuttings and boat christenings happening on May 20th, 2017 in New York City that could potentially occupy my time and that would <laughs> unfortunately make me unavailable. <laughs> what do I know about graduation speeches? Lynn? <laughs> Guest speakers are supposed to get up here and impart some kind of mind-opening understanding on life or, at the very least, offer a confirmation of some kind of what your future might produce. And then I stopped myself. And I was reminded of an offering Lynn had so warmly extended to me just over two years ago when I was here for an alumni event. 
with my hands held in hers, she said to me so simply, you did it. In that confident, strong, and loving Lin way, I have so come to appreciate and honor. And it meant all the world to me. And it was from that memory I realized a simple truth. At any given moment, we will all be called to step into the unknown, asked to sail further than we have ever dared to do so the day before. Today, you and I, we are not very different in that capacity. And then it dawned on me, I have sailed these waters that you are about to embark on. And being a member of this illustrious tribe, I discovered I did have something to share about what I have learned since sitting in that seat there to now sitting in this one here. So, I called off the Google search. <laughs> and I said yes to the unknown. In this life, we are each here to serve as the reminder to one another that we were present, that our voices mattered, and then our existence made some kind of difference. And from the kind reminder that was extended onto me those two plus years ago, I want to extend that forward onto you and say, you did it. You did it! <laughs> you did it. What a tremendous accomplishment, and each of you should feel proud. Remind yourselves of that fact, and that at even this early age and stage, you have done the hard work of making good on a promise. David Castillo, a young man I met, whose parents immigrated to the United States from the Dominican Republic, graduates today alongside his friend and classmate, Tatiana. A first-generation Colombian-American. They make history today by being the first in their families to take this mighty walk. May your efforts from having done something new serve as both your inspiration and motivation to continue to dare. And that remains true for all of you. You all stand on the shore of a unique and irreplaceable time, ready to set sail out from this Boston Harbor and into the unknown of this next chapter. I want to be of service today and remind you that the voyage is entirely worth it. Sail as far and as fast as you can, I say. You have prepared for this. And never has the job of the writer, the creator, the noisemaker, or the visionary been more important in helping to shape our world and bridge the gaps and divides that are pushed up against our shores. And if ever you question or have doubts, call on the voices of those who have been your greatest champions so they might put you back on course and help you navigate through the inevitable rough and tough that life sometimes brings. These forces in your life, be it your given or your chosen families, have seen your potential, that light inside of you, glimmering, and they have worked tirelessly to keep it aflame. It is this support you will need to arm yourself with most as you begin your journey. They will hold your weight when you cannot stand. They will pray for you when you are without words. They will be your cheerleader, your confidant, your guide, or as my Nigerian mother would say, your number one fan. They are your legs, helping you to run when you feel lost or without speed. But most pressing, they will be the ones to remind you not to stop, not to quit. Lean into that. 
When a harsh wind wrestles your bow, causing you to worry or question your belief, don't buckle. You are the dream catchers and the dream makers. Do not let fear disarm your possibility. In the history of all mankind, fear has never been a good enough reason to not try. I had a wonderful conversation with a young woman named Liv, who is preparing herself today to step out into the world to do just that. Liv. We talked about fear and found ourselves sharing a story of how we both discovered through trial only that skydiving is not scary. <laughs> it's not. I had and or have a terrible fear of heights and <coughs> death, um, <laughs> but, but I realized that I was opting out of doing something simply because I was afraid of it. It's the buildup to skydiving and all that we were able to suppose that draws the fear. Our parachute is supposed to open, but what if it doesn't? It's that unknown that scares us. Not knowing what exactly happens in the moment after you leave the plane that can paralyze you from doing the very things your heart desires. Do not allow that to happen. After jumping out of that plane, my first thoughts weren't, this is horrible, or this is exactly what I was afraid of. No, my very first thought after diving into the sky was, this is not scary. Liv and I are here today to serve as evidence <laughs> that the parachute opens <laughs> and that the view is absolutely beautiful. Stand sturdy in that knowledge of what you have been taught and have known to be true about yourself. I can do this. Do not live in fear. It was this discovery that fortified me to extend a fearless attitude into my professional life as well. The willingness to endure until tomorrow and put all of myself into my craft, never worrying about end result or opinion that I believed has helped me to reach further into the abyss rather than stay out of it. Over the years, I have learned that one of the scariest things a pers can, person can risk is being entirely themselves, fully, openly, honestly. It can feel even more terrifying when applied to your work. Ivy, a student from the School of Music, graduates today with a bachelor's degree in music and voice performance. Ivy, take that voice, born only onto you, and let the world know how special it and you are. It is from that place you sing and are heard. <laughs> Let me be the confirmation for you today that your highest artistic self lies in your ability to let your light, your light shine out authentically. It is from that space that your voice will resonate, captivate, and call those fortunate enough to witness it to feel moved. But it takes the risk of sharing all of yourself to get there. The beauty, the ugly, the joy, and the complicated all laid bare. Your best work resides in that space, and you are responsible for drawing it out. Furthermore, I insist that you make sure you ask questions and do not be afraid to ask for help. Without a doubt, these are the two things pride will try to steal from you first. It is not a reflection of weakness to not know the answer, and it is not a de demerit from what you have accomplished to ask for someone's guidance. You will be surprised by the number of people who are genuinely prepared to stop and lend a helping hand if you ask them. But I want, you to, I want to remind you that when given the opportunity, you must be more than anything, prepared to work for it. 
My entire life, my mother had an expression she would impart on my siblings and I, as I made, and as I made the transition from BU to New York City, she reminded me of it once more. Uzo, just work hard. I don't care what you do there, but be sure that you work hard. Eh? I've never heard of nothing coming from hard work. I don't know what will come. I don't know when it will come, but I, knew, I do know something will come if you are willing to work hard. And she was absolutely right. What I know about life, whether I am drawing from my time at BU running around this very track, or from the hours I spent here at the College of Fine Arts, or whether I am drawing from my years living as an artist in New York, I know that talent exists, but I also know you can outwork talent. You have put in tremendous amounts of work during your time here, and that work must continue with the, you on this next leg of the tour. Command from yourself your very best. You are now stepping into the world as a full-time contributor. Every minute now is your own. And the question I want you to wake up asking yourself is, this is my time. Why waste it? I want to end on a simple concept, but it's one thing that is most important and all too often forgotten. Gratitude and happiness. <laughs> She's not forgotten. <laughs> Every moment we have to spend on this earth is another opportunity for each of us to be reminded of the amazing gifts surrounding us. It sounds simple enough, but the truth of the matter is that much of life can quickly become about the collection of things we do or do not have, and not enough about following the basic steps we have all heard over time, but are all too often forgotten. Gratitude is what paves the way to abundance. Be grateful for where you find yourself today while you strive to go further tomorrow, remembering always that these are the moments that help to secure the next. Never consider anything a small thing. It all plays a role in the never-ending story. Thank you is one of the most powerful sentence, sentences ever uttered in the world. When you say it, mean it. We are all aware of the trademark difference when you don't. Say thank you to the teachers who invested into your dreams with only the hopes that you succeed. Say thank you to your classmates who have helped to grow you. Say thank you to your supporters all here for having given to you from their own supply. We, not, we may not remember every time someone forgets to say it, but we certainly remember when they do. Finally, this is your reminder to be the good people that affect lives, usher in new ideas, and have the willingness to persevere towards the goal that at times feels so out of reach for so many. Happiness. Do what makes you happy. Not what makes you well-known, or what makes you rich, or what puts you on the right track. These things are the pathway to what makes you comfortable and not always necessarily happy. They are often thought to be inter interchangeable, but rest assured, they are not. I am certain that if you pursue those things that fulfill you and truly make you happy, the rest will find you. The abundance we all seek in this life is our happiness, and I believe it must be our chief pursuit above all things. Ask yourself, daily the question, does this make me happy? And ask it of yourself often. If the answer is no, follow it up very quickly with the question, what would make me happy? And begin the good work of pursuing that. Sailing into the unknown, it's not always easy, but it is an entirely necessary thing for self-discovery, growth, and for expanding your offering out into the world. These are all good things, so do not let any fear keep your boat safely tied to the dock. I am here to remind you 
to go for it. Jump in it. I promise you the water is fine. You have taken the necessary steps, your life purpose. You have taken the necessary steps to supply your life's, life's purpose with the endurance needed to survive tomorrow. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you all, and congratulations.